Sky News Centre at 7. On the day, a public inquiry was ordered into possible corruption following a report into the police investigation into Stephen Lawrence's murder. His mother, Baroness Lawrence, has fought back tears in the House of Lords. Fact that we as a family had to go through all this and still there's more to come out. The public inquiry will be led by a judge after a report found evidence of possible police corruption by at least one officer during the original investigation. In other news, the US president says a referendum for Ukraine's Crimea region to separate and become part of Russia would violate international law. Officials in the area voted in favour of the move earlier. There will now be a referendum in 10 days' time. Barack Obama says that would also violate the Ukrainian constitution. Any discussion about the future of Ukraine must include the legitimate government of Ukraine. In 2014, we are well beyond the days when borders can be redrawn over the heads of democratic leaders a neighbor of oscar pistorius has told his murder trial he thought the athlete might have been trying to get atonement when he found him praying beside his girlfriend's body the athlete denies murdering reva steenkamp the mod says a soldier who died in afghanistan yesterday was fatally injured while preparing equipment for redeployment he's been named as newcastle born sapper adam morley the business secretary has been criticised for claiming teachers know nothing about the world of work. Vince Cable says he was talking about alternatives to university, which teachers wouldn't have first-hand experience of. And Newcastle manager Alan Pardews admitted a football association charge of improper conduct. He was involved in an incident with Hull's David Myler during their Premier League game last weekend and seemingly aimed a headbutt at the player. That's the latest. I'm Barry Weir. This is WFM 97.2. It's Sandra's Show. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. I hope that beep stops. It should do. Right, good. Oh, well, no, it hasn't, has it? News, stop. Right, so good evening. And welcome once again to my part of your day. And on today's show, or tonight's show, I should say, I've got the letter K on oh, my Mrs. Rice QI, and it's 1973 in memories of Mancini. Not one of my favourite years. And Tony Wilson is on me Blue Plaque Trail, and I've got lots and lots and lots of the latest UFO sightings and a bit of chat and crop circles and much, much more. But before any of that, I'm going to play a top tune by Curtis Mayfield that I've not heard for ages. Yes!
to Sanders show on fabulous WFM radio turn it up now and if you've not even got it switched on switch your radio on now or you're going to miss Sandra shuffle bottom show I didn't know until just now that that Curtis Mayfield tune went on for like, oh, eight minutes. So I thought, oh, best knock it off now. Right then, so it's um, Mrs. Fry's QI and it's K. So John Harvey Kellogg, um, he was a health freak who, who studied food. Uh, so find the perfect diet that would open the bowels three times a day. And he fell out with his brother, William, when he added sugar to uh, John Harvey's cornflake recipe to make it more palatable to a wider market. And isn't he glad now, eh? All these years later. Right, kangaroo doesn't mean I don't know, as it's wired, widely thought to. Aborigines heard English settlers use the word and took it to mean an animal that no one has ever heard of, heard of before, as they'd never seen them before. Uh, they began using the words to describe the settlers' horses. Ah, I get you. And the last one. Only oh, really, really, really small one today. I, and my daughter wrote this, actually, like years ago. Uh, ketamine is a popular anaesthetic uh, in veterinary medicine, and it's also been found to be effective in treating bipolar disorders. When patients haven't responded to antidepressants, it's only used in veterinary medicine um, in its purest form when combined with sedatives. For recreational use, it's cut down to a third of its original strength. So there you go. And now I'm going to play a boss tune. It is time for you to stop all of the
just decided to hide for a few seconds right then it's 1973 and yes it was my uh, Anna's Horribles but apart from that you know other things happened that year as well and the UK Republic the UK oh this is in the UK the, oh no the UK the Republic of Ireland and Denmark right they all enter the European Economic Community and oh, that horrible man Edward Heath is top boy at number 10. And the Open University Awards is first degrees. Yay! British um, share values fall by 4 billion in one day. And railway workers and civil servants go on strike. Victoria Station, Euston Street. Oh, Euston Station, I mean. Um, IRA bombs explode in London, Manchester. Whitehall and the Old Bailey. What was Manchester? No, no, I don't think it was. I don't remember, 1973. Bombing, no, not in Manchester. Harry Bombs is laid in London, Whitehall, and the I think that Manchester was for the railways. Okay. Um, and the Old Bailey, Oxford Road, Sloan Square, King's Cross. And the Queen opens a new London bridge. Good for her. Pink Floyd released Dark Side of the Moon. Wow. Top album, that. Uh, women are admitted to the stock exchange for the first time. And VAT comes into effect. British Leyland launched the Austin Allegro. My dad had one of them. Wow. And the British Library is established. The James Bond film, Live and Let Die, is released in British cinemas. Um with a 45-year-old Roger Moore. And 20 million compensation is paid out to thalidomide. God, I should think so. Uh, Gordon, yeah, Gordon Banks announces his retirement after losing his sight in one eye after a car accident. And I saw him when I was an oldie, he was a kid. And we saw him, he was like, oh, there's Gordon Banks. I was in Wales. Um, oh, he's gonna do me Eddie now. Wasn't Landod, no. Never mind. LBC, so that's the London Broadcasting Company. Come back, Chuck. Um, what happens? Um, Britain's first legal commercial independent radio station begins... L legal? OK. Begins broadcasting, and the Dalai Lama makes his first visit to the UK. The Second Cod War begins between England and Iceland, and mine is begin an overtime ban. Ambulance men begin selective strikes and Prince Anne marries Captain Mark Phillips at Westminster Abbey. Three-day week is announced and inflation rises to 8.4%. Pizza Hut opens its first UK branch in Islington. And, oh, there used to be one. Pizza 